Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series. I feel like it's been a while since I've recorded a Let's Play video, probably because last week I was making another video about the future of the mod. So if you're excited about what's coming next, or you don't know what's coming next, please go watch that video. There's been a lot of exciting updates recently, and although an official release version hasn't been posted, a preview is available of the new features. That is available for download on the Discord server, so if you haven't already, please join the Discord server. So I'm at spawn, and we are going to go to Terminal 2 today, and officially open the first line that's gonna run from there. I know that Terminal 1 has not been filled up yet, there are still some empty platforms. So if you have ideas about where I can connect to from Terminal 1, please let me know. I think there are two more spare platforms? I'm not sure. So I just got on the automatic people mover, which will take me over to Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. So... Actually, why don't I get off the train at Terminal 1 just to take a look at the progress here and how many platforms are used and so on. So it looks like 3 and 4, 1 and 2 are in use. Oh, and these signs are working well, I think. Okay, so 5 and 6 are the only empty ones. And we still have these sidings for the trains just sitting here. So there's an MLR here. And there is a 802 here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the APM and take the train to Terminal 2. Recently, there's been a big change with signals, by the way. There has been different signals added by Epic Puppy. For example, 3 and 4 aspect signals. So please go check out the latest preview available on Discord. And I know there's been many comments about how do I join the server? Is it available for download? And how can I be a builder? So the answer to all of those questions are on Discord, including instructions on how to join as a visitor. And also, since this is a server, it will not be available for download, unfortunately. The world is about like 50 gigabytes, so I don't think anyone would want to spend so much time downloading it. All right. So it looks like there's been some updates since I last came here. For example, this is a toilet that got built. I don't know whether this is a male or female toilet. I guess it's both of them together. And then I just got off the train from the unpaid area. Wait, yeah, the paid area. So if I go out here, this will be exiting. So I don't want to do that. But I don't know why this door is open. Maybe it's for like, maybe it's for like wheelchair or stroller access. And here's some tickets and looks like a control panel. And then here is a door to get on the tracks for maintenance. Nice. I really like these small like areas, like decorated corners where there's a bit of decoration, furniture, and just small little things to spice up the area a little bit. Because if it's just plain walls and all that stretching for a long distance, it can get, tend to get boring. Wow, look at this area. This is a very short escalator. And this looks like some station art, like an end ship or something. Really well done. And then here comes to the Terminal 2 concourse. So I'm not sure where these escalators go to. Wow, there's another artwork. It adds a really nice touch since this is such a big open space. Wow, I feel like I'm in an art museum right now. This is so big and grand. And I think this just goes to the ground terminal. So I know Kira has been working on a high-speed terminal above ground, 
and I think this goes up. Wow, look at all these chains and hanging lanterns. This architecture is really impressive, much better than what I could have done. So I'm really glad that Kira helped me renovate this area and built this over like on ground area. See, this goes up to street level and there are some exit gates here with bus connections, I think. So these flowers, what are these? Spore blossoms, they emit these particles down here. Okay, I think we can take the lift down because going down those escalators took a quite a long time. Okay. Oh, there's connection to Terminal 1 as well. So if you come in through there, I guess you don't have to take the APM anymore. So that part connects to Terminal 1 through a passageway. Ooh. And then this part goes to Terminal 2. What happened to Platform 1? How come the sign is not saying Platform 1? Maybe they just forgot to add it. Okay, so this part is the normal part of the... Or not the normal part, but like the pre-built part of the high-speed terminal. Last time, we were working on the signs here. And looks like they're still the same. And all the lifts and escalators are still here. That's good. And I think Kira added extra lifts on the end here. Alright, so before we start building, let's take a look at the system map. I'm also going to turn on the high speed layer just to see where the existing lines are going to go. So we have one to Yangton. This is the south southeast connection. We have one up north to North Tundra and St. Anne's. We have one to Jonathan's Resort and to Callus LRT as well. So you might have noticed that the high speed only really goes to the right side of the map. And so I want to change that since Terminal 2 will be opened soon. So to go west, we have to find a good connection point. And I've gotten permission from other builders to connect at Danielston Memorial. I think this will be a good point to connect to because previously I've asked about Lake City, but Navi, the owner, decided that it would not be a good space for high speed because there's already these express lines connecting to Lake City. And it's also kind of close to spawn anyway. So the next logical hub might be Danielston Memorial. There's actually a cable car line here as well. Going to Moiseni, which has an a flying minecart connection to Lake City. I forgot if I featured that last time. And then on the west to Shirakaba Mountain, there is the fur line connecting to it right from spawn. So this line is built by OTS. Looks like there's a bunch of jams, so it's not really running right now, it looks like. But that will be an express line. It's not a high speed, but it serves the purpose of connecting the west side back to spawn. So I'm not going to build a high speed to OTS's area right here because OTS already has a connection to spawn there. And northwest, there's nothing right now. So I think southwest would be the most logical place to put a high speed. I've pasted in the coordinates and I've teleported over. I'm going to scout out the area a little bit before I start building. Looks like this is already part of the station. So I wonder where is the entrance. Looks like this house was converted to an entrance. Danielston Memorial. Okay. Oops. So. Oh, hi. Didn't mean to come into your house there. I'm going to take the lift 
down to the concourse and see how the layout is how the how the station is laid out so this is a stairway to the exit I think and there's some more doors here oh these are automatic doors nice and then connections to trains and cable cars yep wow nice this is the same ceiling design as I commented on a builder guys line okay so the violet line the violet line connects here oh I wonder what's this area this is part of the unpaid area and what's this why is there a lift shaft outside I don't know okay so let's check platforms of the violet line there seems to be a lot of lifts at the station which is good Oh, nice. They're using class 377, and I really like this livery, too. So this goes to Whitefish Isles. No exit. Okay. So it looks like a lot of this is still work in progress. So I'm wondering if I should build a separate section for the high speed. So this is the Circulator IT to Moiseni and Ishtakaba. So that's a cable car line. And this cable car is underground, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so I kind of don't want to make the high speed above ground here because it might ruin the aesthetic of the village. Or maybe I can put this Ooh, in the ravine. This looks like a natural tunnel already created. Might be interesting to just put the station here cutting through. How deep is this station? So the lowest tracks are about here. Oh, I just realized my HUD is turned off. There we go. Now we can see the coordinates. So the tracks are at about y equals 27 or high 20s. So the ravine I just saw is here y equals 10 in this big tunnel here. So first thing I'm going to clear out the water because that's kind of annoying. And this one as well. I don't know, I just I just think this natural tunnel looks pretty cool and it might be a good place to build a platform. So we'll see. We only really need two platforms here right now for the high speed. Maybe an island platform will be good. Alright, so I'm gonna start making a platform pl prototype like how I always do. And I'll stack 60, probably, 60, and 60. So with this, I will have about 10 blocks on both sides. And the resulting length would be, hopefully, 101. All right, so the next step would be to just dig the tunnels. Let's go. So this is east. This is facing east. And then I'm planning to go just straight east and up north. I guess I'll start digging because we are at negative 9,900 and we need to get to around zero. So that's going to take quite a while, but it's going to be easy with World Edit. So if you haven't already installed World Edit on your own personal worlds, it's going to save you a lot of time. 
so I'm going to do my standard tunnels, my standard 5x5 five five tunnels, because those have always worked well. I know they haven't been the nicest, and they look pretty plain, but they do work well for what they're supposed to be. And this is also y equals 4, so I'm going to need to dip down a little bit as well, because I believe the platforms are negative 32 or something at terminal 2. So I'm not going to stack too far yet. I'm going to stack 1,000 at a time, so that I make sure I don't hit anyone else's railways, and I can always undo if necessary. So there are some tracks over there. But I'm deeper than that, so I'm not going to hit them. Okay, that's the first 1,000. And then... The next set of 1,000. Whoa, these... Oh, was there a train that went by? Alright. That's the next 1,000. What station? Oh, that's not a station. Just a glass tunnel cutting through underwater. All right, so that's 2,000. Okay, so I had to go and fix my headphone connection on my computer because it wasn't working earlier. But I'm gonna continue building this tunnel. I was gonna join the Discord video chat later. And I also realized that earlier the video quality wasn't great. There was like artifacts and stuff. So sorry about that. Hopefully it's fixed now. So stacking some more. Oh, we ran into a station here. Is this also the violet light? Okay, this is uh, Isthmus. Wow. I like this snowy Badlands area. All right, gonna continue checking my track. All right, as I discovered while digging, I will have to start going downwards from here because I actually ran into Whitefish Isle Station. So if I keep going forward here, you see these tracks converge and slope down here. So if I kept going straight, I was gonna hit this platform right here. So I had to undo the stack, Whitefish Isles, yeah, I had to undo it, and I'm planning to go down lower to match Terminal 2 of the High Speed Terminal. So I came back to Terminal 2, and I think maybe I'll take Platform 1 for this, because it's closest to the southwest. And so I'll just claim platform 1. So the coordinates of this would be... 166.32.376 I'm gonna write that down somewhere. Alright. So... I'll, yeah, I'll remove this stuff later. And the death of this will be negative 32. Hmm, the problem is I forgot where my tunnel ended over there. So I can't just teleport back to it. I should have marked the, those cords as well. Oh, actually, I can just teleport to whitefish something. Yay, found my tunnel. Okay, I'm going to start sloping down here and go down to negative 32 from here. So X needs to be 166, but I'm going to worry about that later. First, I'm going to go down first. This should be a gradual enough slope that no one's going to complain. Five, nine, one, six, negative 32. 
Wait. Oh, 4529. Alright, this is quite a smooth curve compared to the ones I usually do. The very gradual slope down to negative 32, and I filled a 100 block tunnel here just for a placeholder. So I'm gonna start my tunnel operations so that I don't have to wait later. Tunnel, tunnel, wall, and bridge. Usually I just use stone for these as well. Oh, I was wondering why my task didn't start. It's because Speed Jones has been doing operations as well. Okay, we'll just wait. I think I should have built the, the tunnel next to it at the same time. That would make it so much easier. Because originally what I was thinking is doing two separate tracks separated by the island platform width like that. But I guess there's not really a point to do that. Might as well make the tracks merge up already. The second tunnel is going to look like this. So this is Danielston Memorial and oh, I built this track going to this side and they're gonna join back here and go all the way oh I guess I forgot to connect this part as well so I've successfully built the tunnel all the way to spawn terminal 2 so these are just some tracks that I placed down that will connect up to here okay so I gotta replace these tracks real quick as well because I like to use 300. <laughs> okay, so these will go this way and all the way through Kira's nice tunnels. Uh, probably put one down here and connect here. And we can't forget about signaling because we don't want the trains to jam themselves at this single track section. So I usually like to just put down signals all the way here just like in my previous videos as well as on the platform here. I'm so excited to get this running. Oh wait, did someone already take this platform? Or is this just like a... I think this is just a dummy area that Kira put in. So. I don't need to worry about that because I don't think anyone has claimed this area yet. Okay, so I'm going to put signals on these one-way rails as well because I don't want a train just sitting here on this inbound track while a train pulls out from there because they will clip through each other. So instead, I will put signaling all the way out here. And now the final thing to do is to connect everything up. Oh, also make a turn back and stuff like that. Actually, one part of the tunnel here, I think I cut through tea powders rails, which are down here. But the height and all the alignment was so perfect that I didn't want to change it. <laughs> so I decided to put slabs here. So in T's perspective, her tunnels wouldn't look like there's something cutting through it, but my tunnels here would look like this. <laughs> so the trains will still go over. If you're riding on the train, you wouldn't notice it. But yeah, there's like these half blocks here. I mean, better than nothing, I guess. All right, I've connected all the tracks, so these are all connected all the way to spawn. But now I need to make my famous temporary turn back. So what I'm going to do first here is uh, make like a 100 block section. Just so that 
you won't see the trains turn cut through so crazily. Kind of like what I did at Jonathan's Resort. So this is how my turn back looks like. <laughs> the trains go like whoop, cut through and come out here. Okay. Um, now we need to go back to spawn and work on terminal 2 because right now, where is it? North, west. Right now terminal 2 has no way for the trains to turn back. Or actually they, the trains can just reverse at the platform here. But what I need is a depot and I think Kira has put enough space here so that I can put a depot here. I'm not sure. Or maybe I can just do my crazy depot in the ground kind of design. <laughs> oh, by the way, these are the new signal lights that were added. Let me show you how that works real quick. So I have them installed in the spawn grand circular upstairs. Where is it? <laughs> this way, I think. So what's added are three and f whoa, lag spike. Three and four aspect signals, as you can see here. So now it's green because there are no trains in front. And this actually checks for the next two signal sections. So if the next one's blocked, oh, what happened there? So if the next rail section is blocked, it's going to turn red. And after this clears up, if the next section is still blocked, it will turn yellow. And then if that one in front clears as well, it will turn green. Another update to signals is that it no longer requires signal connectors to be used on the track in order for signals to work. So now we can use the red green or the two aspect signals three aspect signals, four aspect signals, without signal blocks defined on the tracks. So as you can see here, I don't have any color signals on the track right here, but this still functions like normal. So I put one here, I also put one on the clockwise section. So it's red now, turn yellow, and then it'll be green. The four aspect signals work similarly, except that it checks the next three signal sections. So when the train is right in front of it, it'll turn red, and then two yellow, and then one yellow, and then green. Okay, so I wonder where I can use these in the high speed. Maybe I can just put them down like... Hmm. It's easy to get lost down here. But yeah, let me put my siding in first, and I can decide where I want to put the other stuff. I'm also setting everything up in the depot, like the roots and the siding. So, there's also another update where if you hover over the items, it shows you a little summary of what the train is. And these, this text is all pulled from Wikipedia but it doesn't support the custom resources yet unless people define them in here. But the default trains all pull from Wikipedia, so I'm going to select hmm, 377 or 802. 802, I guess. And then how many trains? Four trains for now. And I'm calling this Danielston HSR. Maybe 100? Refresh. Oh. Alright, path has successfully generated. Looks like it takes 8 minutes for the train to loop back. Or 7 to 8 minutes. So if I make the trains... Two... Well, 100 seconds each, then I might be able to fit like six trains on here. Let's just try that. Okay, now we just wait. Is this the first train? Let's get on the first train. 
Let's go. First train to Danielston Memorial. This is a test train though. It's not like open for revenue yet. In case you haven't noticed, the chunk loading has been much, much better since I upgraded the parts of the server computer over Black Friday. So I want to thank you so much again for supporting, especially Patreon members and those who are subscribed to the Discord server as well. So there's another way to help me out if you want to. So there's a Discord server subscriptions added recently where you can subscribe to a tier, sort of like in Patreon, and you can support me in that way so that I can continue to upgrade the parts of the server or continue to develop the mod and make it better and better with each update. So chunk loading has been much better. We don't have to worry about going into the void anymore. And the high speed rail experience is much smoother. So I'm really happy about that. It looks like there's no issue so far on this line. But it's quite a long ride though, because we have to go 9,000 blocks in the X direction and 4,000 block in the Z direction. So that is 1,300, if my calculations are correct. That's a long way to go. 13, actually 13 kilometers isn't that long in real life. But I guess taking the train in real life will probably take a few, at least a few minutes. So I guess it's about the same in Minecraft as well. But it just feels long because it's in a game and you kind of expect things to happen quickly in a game. So that's why sitting on a train for a few minutes feels long in Minecraft. Even waiting for trains. That's why I like to make my lines very frequent. I know that's not realistic at all and people have said that to me. But I just feel like for a game, it's like, do you really want to be standing there for 3 minutes or 20 minutes waiting for a train? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some people prefer that and it and it's fine. Okay, we're finally pulling into Danielston Memorial with no issue so far. Let's see. This plate displays correctly, which is good. I wonder what I'll do with the design of the station. Maybe I'll leave that in another episode. Because building the tracks already took enough time. I probably shouldn't take the train through the turn back. Just let the train do it it's by itself. And then here, it says spawn high speed rail terminal 2. Okay. The station is Danielston Memorial. And we are heading back to spawn. I wonder if we'll see other trains along the line as we go back. Because we did put six trains on the line, and I don't think all of them have come out yet. So I really hope it doesn't jam because it's going to be quite a problem. Oh, another update that happened was that if you have a rail section that is blocked ahead of you, the train used to come to a complete stop at the at the rail node right before it, even after that rail section has been cleared. But now with the new changes, if the rail section in front was blocked, your train will start slowing down because it thinks that it's blocked, but when it's cleared up, the train will accelerate immediately instead of coming down to a stop first and then speeding back up. Although this has introduced a bug with manual driving, where the train won't turn back into automatic mode, or I mean manual mode, until it hits the next station. But I will work on fixing that. Also, if a train is blocked at a platform, the doors will stay open now, instead of closing and waiting until this section clears up. So there's a bunch of quality of life improvements in the previous update, so please go check it out. It looks like six trains is more than enough. Or six train is might not be enough for this section actually because the train just takes eight minutes for a round trip 
All right, we're heading back to spawn. Oh, did you see that? There is another train that came by, and we were supposed to stop at the signal, but we kept going because the train slowed down and sped back up again. That's the update I was talking about. Ooh, there's another train still at the siding here. I hope once that train comes out, it's not gonna lag up the system, hopefully. So this train should go back out right away. And I wonder when this one will depart. The next train is coming in 40 seconds as well. So I don't know if six trains is too much that is gonna jam everything up. Hopefully not though. I think I already counted five trains on the system. So this might be just the last one. Okay. Oh, it's coming out now. Oh, I also can put some signaling down here because I haven't done that yet. Maybe some barriers here at the ends of the platform. Let's try using the four aspect signals. See if those work here. Sometimes these signals don't work that well if... Hmm, actually, this whole section is signaled, so it'll always stay red if a train is here. Yeah, it's not gonna work very well in this part, unfortunately. But yeah, one flaw of these signaling systems, especially the three and four aspect signals, is that if you're out of the chunk radius or if you're out of range of the track sections that is supposed to detect it's gonna stay green because it doesn't know that those sections are blocked all right so all the trains are deployed and i guess only time will tell if the system will jam but for now i would say the our work here is done for the Daniel's Tin Memorial HSR. What's left to do is to decorate that station, but I can do that in another episode. For now, I'm going to tour around and show you all some new updates. So as I showed you earlier on the system map, Daniel's Tin Memorial has a cable car. So I'm gonna go there, go to Moissany, show you this flying minecart route. By the way, go check out that what's next for Minecraft Transit Railway video, like for real, because that will help you understand what's going on here. Okay, so I am at Danielston Memorial here. I decided to teleport instead of taking the high speed because even that takes a few minutes. Riders, services, and tickets. All right, so let's say I took the train here and I am entering these gates. And I'm going to this part, Circulator IT, to Moissany, C4. So here it is. I'm gonna take the first available cable car. And this whole section is underground. I actually wonder if this cable car ever goes above ground. The last time I took it, it was all underground as well. Oh wow, we came out into this ravine area. Now we're going back in. I kind of like that. I feel like it'll be a nice view from up there looking down and seeing all the cable cars just go through. And here we have a 90 degree turn. Remember that if you make turns with the cable cars, you must use these station nodes. The normal nodes won't work because they only allow you to create straight cables. But the downside of turns is that the cable car goes slower because it has to physically get off the rope and onto the rail where it rolls along on these wheels. 
There's usually a chain moving these cars, but in Minecraft, of course, I'm not gonna have people put down chains as well because there'll be no space for it. So we'll pretend that this rail already includes a chain hidden in there, which is pulling the cable cars at a slower speed. Because usually at station rails, that's when people get on and off. So this is Prairie Du Chien. I don't know how to pronounce that. What is this? Platform screen doors. Interesting design. I guess it's to tell people that, okay, you're hitting the end of the platform. Don't get on and off anymore. All right, the next station is Moiseny, where we will get off and change to the circulator IP. So I think this whole system is owned by Puefi. I always am scared that I'm pronouncing your name wrong. And Danielston Memorial, all those stations are owned by Puefi. So I've gotten permission to build a high-speed terminal there, but I don't know how it would be connected to the main station, or if it would be better to be under the same station area. I don't know. But, wow, look at this cave. Andesite Caves, this is the biome of this. It feels cool taking a cable car through here. It kind of feels like a minecart like exploring a cave via a minecart instead of taking an actual train through here because it's more immersive as well. I've also seen on the news that Hong Kong is trying to introduce a completely crystal clear glass cabin cable car for the Longping 360 cable car in Hong Kong. So the ground would be a window just like what we have in the mod already. So the ground will be transparent. There's still going to be this frame, of course, to support the glass. But like this bottom half of the window will also be transparent, part of the glass. And I think these seats here will be transparent as well. So I think that'll be really cool. Although I've only been on the Longping cable car once because it's so expensive. It's like $100 each or for each person one way I think we go out this way where we get the circulator IP oh automatic door okay yeah it's right here I think signage could be improved a little bit here <laughs> but I managed to find my way so that's good so this is the circulator IP. I don't think I've shown very much of other types of transportation on the Let's Play series, but here is a chance to see that. So this side is for departures, board for all seaplane flights. So this is actually just a mic cart. Oh, is it gonna stop? Maybe it's gonna go here open for the arrivals and then loop around and come back here for the departures oh yeah that was the second plane let's come here so this is called the flying minecart like this vehicle right here is literally called a flying minecart so we will go along these tracks and don't be confused this is not a boat And keep going, keep going. And we're picking up speed. And here we go. We have taken off. Seattle has a lot of seaplanes. You see them all of the time in Lake Union. So Lake Union is like the lake in the middle of Seattle. And people own boathouses along the docks and some people even have seaplanes so you can see them landing and going up all the time on the weekends when people like to go on their plane rides especially in the summer maybe not so much in the winter but a seaplane is a plane that can land on the water so you don't need like a huge runway for that 
the water is your runway. So this is like one of the default vehicles in the airplanes category because I don't need to spend effort making another plane model, but there is one modeled plane in the game as well. So if you want to find out what that is, go check out that video I keep talking about, or download the latest preview and find out for yourself. It's still a work in progress, but it should be done pretty soon. I'm not going to give any deadlines for myself, because it's better to underpromise and overdeliver. I think. So this plane comes here to Lake City, back into familiar territory. I actually haven't explored Daniel's Tint before much, so that was a first for me. I really like the design of this house. It's nice and simple, it blends in well. Maybe it's part of the village that got generated, but it's like the perfect house to be converted into this seaplane route. There's a castle, and we're back at Lake City Station. Alright, so after taking the circulator, uh, it's already night time. After that, I have kind of looked around for places to tour, but I don't think there's been many new developments. If there are, please let me know and I can do that in the next episode, which is going to be the finale of Season 2. So I really hope you enjoyed the series, hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and like the video for more. We will be doing exciting things in Season 3, which I will announce in the finale next time. I will also do some line features between then. So if you want your line to be featured in a separate video dedicated to your line, please let me know and I'll be happy to do that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoyed the update as well. Head over to Discord if you want to get some details about how to join the server and how to download the new updates and just ask questions in general. If you really like this mod, consider subscribing to Patreon because it really helps me out a lot with mod development, with hosting the server, with upgrading computer parts and such. Or you can also subscribe to the Discord as well. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time!